Hey, thanks for joining me today for episode 53 of Podcasting Your Brand. I'm your host, producer Jemmy, providing learning lessons for you to podcast your brand. And today I'm going to share a podcasting one-on-one topic, structuring your solo episodes. This episode is brought to you by my own brand, Flintstone Media. Listen in and let's do this. Firstly, I wanted to share some really cool news. I was featured in podcast magazines, 40 over 40 in podcasting for 2022. Such an honor. I can't even believe this. So a little history in brief. (laughs) The podcast industry welcomed me with such open arms so many years ago, and it's been a blessing beyond blessings. So many because of podcasting stories that I could give you. It's been incredible. And in fact, that's a big reason why I do this show. I want to give back. I want to help you make sure that you can be the best podcaster that you can be so you can experience the power and joy of this medium as fully as possible as as I have. And the best part of this honor of being included in the 40 over 40 list was that this was an award for my peers and my fellow podcasters. So to have my fellow podcasting peers recognize my effort in giving back is just so awesome. So thank you to everyone for your thoughts, your nominations, and your ongoing support. It's truly, truly appreciated. All right. Well, let's get into my notes for you on solo episodes. And I wanted to start us off today with the reasons for having solo episodes, because solo content can really serve you well, whether your show is primarily a guest show or a solo show like this one. So as I run through these reasons, remember that you should at least consider having at least some (laughs) of your content be solo. And that could mean that all of your episodes are solo. It could mean that you have a mix of both where some of your episodes are solo and some are guested. Or it could be that your show's main format is to have part of the episode be guested and part of the episode be solo. All right, without getting into social media and other platforms you can use to quote unquote put yourself out there, speaking strictly within the scope of your podcast, these are the three main ways you can do it. All of your episodes are solo, some of your episodes are solo, or your episodes are within each one, a mix of both. So whenever you hear me say solo episodes within this episode, please know that I'm talking about all three of those methods of creating solo content for your podcast. So whichever applies to you or whatever you might envision, when you hear solo episodes, I'm talking about all three collectively. Okay, so the reasons to do it. Well, I just shared one with you as I started this episode. Solo episodes can elevate both your general public profile and your industry profile. Because the only brain on display during your solo episodes is yours. And though this show is a more recent endeavor on my podcast and career timeline, I have definitely noticed how much more recognition and how many more referrals have begun coming my way since launching Podcasting Your Brand, my solo show. And that's great because that's exactly why I decided it was time for me to have a solo show about podcasting because it was time for me to remind the industry how much I've accomplished, how much my expertise has evolved and elevated, et cetera, et cetera, and to do so with zero dilution of my voice and expertise by having guests, at least not in these first few dozen episodes. I want my brain to be on display. I know it sounds sounds arrogant, maybe, but I want my brain to be on display. I want my career examples to be the fodder of your learning lessons. In short, solo episodes are a great way to boost your brand. And another reason why I wanted to start this solo show for my own career is another reason why you should consider solo episodes as well, to preserve your original thoughts. It's funny. I would get really excited whenever someone would repeat my advice in a public forum like Clubhouse, for example, and it was clear that they valued the information and wanted to share it. I was like, yes, 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 preach. (laughs) But I would not get excited, however, when someone speaking would use my exact words 
or an exact example that I've shared from my career path, my own story, things that I often refer to as Jemmyisms and imply that it was their own original thought. That's not cool. Some of my Jemmyisms have come from years of my experience, sometimes getting things both right and wrong. They've come from my successes, from feeling forward, from years of blood, sweat, and tears. My blood, sweat, and tears. They come from my life. And if that sentiment resonates with you, that you would get really annoyed and ticked off if someone was appropriating your stuff, that you have life lessons that have allowed you to craft a method of teaching and approaching your field of expertise, if you want those preserved as your own thoughts and experiences, a podcast is a great way to do that. So now when someone shares my mirror exercise, I know that I can forever point to episode 34 of this show as proof that I was the originator of that method. If someone wants to claim my disciples analogy, great! Just know that I can now always point to episode 45 of this show as its origin. Those, among many other teachings, are my original thoughts. And not for nothing, but Black people and women, and I am both of those things, <laughs> have had our work appropriated so many times over the centuries, and it's happened to me multiple times. So this is a safeguard for me, and solo episodes can begin to create that safeguard for you as well. And two more reasons. Number three, sometimes it's just fun and refreshing to switch things up with a solo episode. And number four, sometimes it's just fun and refreshing to try a solo episode out as a challenge for yourself. Okay, enough of my why should you try it soapbox. Let me get to my actual notes on solo episodes. Just like when prepping for a guested episode, you need to create a structure to the episode flow. You should find a beginning place to start and have an end goal to aim for, your purpose or your lesson. And then you need to figure out how to navigate from one end to the other end, from where you're starting your lesson to where your lesson would feel complete. But more than ever, in your solo episodes, you need to have a good structure and flow. Now, with a guest, you want to have it sound like a conversation, and you need to then allow for the flexibility of the flow, right? As I've discussed on previous episodes. So the structure that you prepare for is more anticipated with room for flexibility. But that doesn't really translate to solo episodes because your listener wants to know that you have a sense of direction and structure that they are going to follow along with. Kind of think about it like a presentation or a public speech. Typically, a presentation opens with what you're going to be laying out over the course of that presentation. So your first slide will say something like, we're going to cover this and then talk about that. And then the next session will end with this. And then we'll have time at the end for Q&A. <laughs> As a presenter, you do that to set your audience expectations up so they can best follow along with your presentation. They know where they are as you're going. And whether you actually provide a rundown like this at the top of your podcast episode or not is completely up to you and what you feel like your audience needs. But you should create this kind of an outline in preparation for your episode in order to organize your thoughts. It doesn't necessarily mean that your episode has to be super buttoned up and stuffy like an actual presentation can be, okay? It doesn't, doesn't have to be that. It just has to be organized. It has to have a good flow. Because if you don't know where your episode is going, I can guarantee you, your listener is going to get lost too. And an episode with a confusing sense of direction can leave your listener feeling disoriented and unfulfilled. And that does not do well for audience loyalty and growth. So now let's turn your attention to how to create that structure. Essentially, you want to break the message down into the main pieces. First, what is the goal of the episode? Start with that end in mind. Then think about what you need to convey to feel like you've completed that lesson and your listener will walk away feeling satisfied. So I figured the most effective way for me to illustrate this for you is by using my prep for this episode as an example. 
Well, I first listed out the main ideas of my lesson. In the case of this episode, my original idea list had seven items on it, such as discussing the episode structure, not making the episode all about you, reasons for having solo content, and a few more. Then I placed those ideas into natural groupings. Which ones could I kind of talk about together? That allowed me to discover that there were three natural sections to this episode's lesson. Then I placed those ideas into natural groupings. I thought, which ones of these could I kind of talk about together? And that allowed me to discover that there were three natural sections to this episode's lesson. Then I organized those sections into logical order. Number one, reasons for having solo episodes. Number two, creating a structure to the episode flow, which is the part we're in right now. (laughs) And number three, keeping your episodes within scope, which I'll be getting into with you here next. And finally, step number four, I fleshed out my notes for each part. Then I got in front of the mic and I hit record. (laughs) It's super easy, really, once you get the hang of it. So to review once again, step one, list out the main ideas of your lesson. Step two, place those ideas into natural groupings. Step three, organize those sections into a logical order. And step four, flesh out your notes for each part. Then once you have the structure of your topic laid out, all you need are the bookends of a beginning and an end. So for the beginning, rather than introducing your guest, obviously because you don't have one, (laughs) be sure to introduce your topic. Whether you actually provide a full rundown at the top of your podcast episode or not is up to you and what feels like your audience really needs. But if you do, you might say something like, I'm starting with reasons for having solo episodes, then discussing creating a structure to the episode flow, and ending with keeping your episodes within scope. You just likely say a little more awfully than that, but that's essentially the gist of it. Well, if this isn't your first episode of this show that you're listening to, if It is, by the way. Welcome! Great to meet you. But if it's not, then you may have noticed that I don't really do that. (laughs) I don't do a first presentation slide style opening to give you a breakdown of what to expect on the episodes, at least not usually. Typically, all that I do is what I did today on this episode. I simply say, today I'm going to share a podcasting 101 topic, structuring your solo episodes. And that's it. That's all you get. (laughs) But that's really, I think, all that you need, because then I try to move the episode along pretty quickly. So if I'm wrong, let me know. But on this show, I've decided to just introduce the topic in the shortest way possible. So on your solo episodes, you can experiment with which way will work best for you. A breakdown, a first presentation slide style breakdown versus just a quick naming of the topic. But you definitely, either way, You definitely want to introduce it somehow to anchor your listener. You don't want to just start talking. And as for the ending, just as with the guested episode, remember that it's all about your listeners. So when you feel like the topic has reached a good conclusion for your listener, it's a good time to end it. So a simple wrap up is all you need. Remind your listener of any additional resources that you may have links for in your show notes and invite them to send in questions or give you feedback or engage with you on social or whatever. Then simply thank them for listening and say goodbye. So one more note before we end today. And for today, what are you talking about, Producer Gemma? You haven't talked to me yet about keeping my solo episodes within the scope of my topic. You said multiple times today that you're going to end with how I can keep my episodes within the scope of my topic. Hello? <laughs> well, that is my final note on preparing your solo episodes. Recognizing when you risk giving your listener too much. So on one of my recent episodes about having guests, I talked about sometimes you have to recognize when you have to let a question go. Same kind of thing. Recognize when you risk giving your listener too much. When you're doing a solo episode, chances are pretty good that it's really meaty and you want your listener to walk away having learned something. So you don't want to overload your listener with too much all at once. Give them enough to feel satisfied, feel like the lesson is complete in and of itself, but also a good enough amount that it's enough for them to process 
without feeling overwhelmed. Well, as I was preparing my notes for this episode, a common prep occurrence for me happened. I realized just how much I had to say and how much I really needed to say on that specific part on scope in order to feel like I was really serving you well as my listener. So turning now within this same episode towards my topic of keeping your episodes on scope, it just wasn't feasible for me to stuff all of that into this episode because I realized there was so much I wanted to cover within that alone. How deep you should go in your prep, how to avoid making your solo content all about you, and how not to either rush or stretch your content in order to hit a time target. So I made a decision as I was prepping this episode to cover all of that as its own episode. And that kind of thing happens to me all the time when preparing my episodes, which is why you may have noticed that I present information often over a course of a few episodes. I try to feel like there's a complete lesson within each episode, as in this episode I talked about the structure and how I create that structure and how you can create that structure. But the full scope of my information is going to be presented over the course of a few episodes. And this happens to me all the time. And I share my thought journey on this with you to illustrate that you should be willing to be flexible in planning the content and scope of your solo episodes as well. What you may sit down to prepare may end up being one episode, it may end up being two, it may end up being more, but we'll get into the scope a lot more on the next episode. This is so meta. <laughs> In the meantime, you can begin chewing on, processing, and perhaps even begin planning for some solo episodes after this episode, now that you know how to create good solo episode structure. And as a quick mention, if you are podcasting your brand, whether a personal brand or a business brand, then you want to check out the app created by my friend, Jason. It's the OWL app spelled with two W's and two L's. Monetize your expertise on OWL, going active when you want to and taking calls from people seeking your advice. In fact, you can catch me on there for a one-on-one -on -one on demand coaching session anytime that I'm active. And as a side note, it's a great way to land some extra clients for your business. So check out OWL. There'll be a link in the show notes as always. Just be sure to sign up with my referral code PL954123 so you can secure your $10 credit. Then subscribe to my newest show, The Owl Podcast, which I'm proudly co-hosting with the founder of The Owl app himself, again, my friend Jason. <laughs> The experts on the OWL app are masters of their fields, and they are now joining Jason and I to explore how you can develop your expertise. They define being an expert in what they do, so you can further define and go after becoming the expert that you want to be. Develop your expertise with these guest powerhouses of knowledge, diverse experts from the OWL app. All their insights and tips are revealed for you on the OWL podcast. Listen in to connect, learn, and grow. Then download the OWL app today. Again, spell with two W's and two L's with my referral code and monetize your own expertise. Up next on episode 54, as mentioned, I'll continue with keeping your solo episodes within scope. So if you're not subscribed, be sure you do. And in the meantime, remember that I have a whole host of free tips for you on my website. Just check out flintstonemedia.com slash free tips. You'll see them all there. Thanks for tuning in to Podcasting Your Brand. In this chapter of the show, I'm revealing how you can harness the power of podcasting to expand your brand. So come and pick up what I've been putting down since I started podcasting in 2014. Avoid common mistakes and propel your podcasting and branding forward. And if you have questions or you're interested in becoming a sponsoring brand of this show, don't be shy. Just reach out to me. It's super easy. Just my email address. <laughs> Jemmy, spelled J-A-I-M-E at flintstonemedia.com. It's producer Jemmy signing off for now. Remember, the only thing more powerful than your voice is your spirit to use it. So turn that mic on. <laughs> <laughs>